Hey folks, it's Edwin here from Beyond Systems. I'm back out here, a little bit more in nature. Yeah, there's a street close by, but what the heck, it's still better than sitting somewhere in a room. Now today I want to quickly share with you some thoughts of mine that I have regarding actually specific words, meaning spe specific vocabulary that I use and their relation to understanding what I teach and what I'm talking about in either my videos or my regular classes and workshops and so on. So lately I realized that some of the most fundamental and most basic vocabularies that I use when I describe movement, when I talk about movement and consciousness and so on, are simply obviously too far out for some folks. And well, actually, who can blame them? Which vocabulary am I talking about? I'm talking about things like movement pattern. Like what is a movement pattern? For most people who have never thought about it really, a movement pattern seem to be, seems to be something like, well, specific type of sports. And while this can be one interpretation of the word movement pattern, say the movement pattern you use, for example, to play football, um, in, regard, uh, in, in, in relation to, say, the, the movement pattern that you use for swimming, this is one possibility to use this term. However, um, this is most of the time not the way I use this term. And there are a couple of others as well. And so I figured, well, maybe it's a good idea to, to just start a really small series over the next couple of weeks and months where I pretty much explain how I'm using specific words and how they are used in different, say, fields of study. Because when I'm talking to a biomechanist and I'm talking about a movement pattern, it's completely clear what I'm talking about. If I'm talking to a regular engineer, which just happened to me last week, and I'm talking about movement patterns, they sometimes have no clue what I'm talking about. And it took me about 10 minutes to actually describe to him in his words what a movement pattern might be. And there are some other things as well, some other aspects that have to do with this correlation between our mind, our body, or what is an emotional pattern? Was it, what is a habitual pattern? What does pattern in itself even mean? And so my thought is to really create a small, small series um, and even do some, some real life presentations for larger audience that I will then film and also put up on YouTube um, where I try to get people to a practical understanding of some of the most basic vocabulary that I use or that are used in fitness, in training, in development, in self-development, spiritual development, whatever it actually is. So if this resonates with you and you guys think, okay, cool, sounds like an interesting concept, like an interesting idea, give me a thumbs up or just simply um, write some of those terms that might not be so clear for yourself um, just down below in the comments and um, yeah, let me know what you think about that because I think just to know how we use our language is specifically which meaning we put to certain words in regard to what topic is extremely important especially when we are working through a medium like YouTube, like video tutorials, like maybe one-on-one -on -one coaching via Skype and stuff like that, which I'd all do. But it's always the most important thing to understand each other, to more or less talk the same language. And I'm not talking about like perfect grammar or anything like that. That's a different thing entirely. I'm really talking about how do we use words. Um, this is also something like specifically when, when we look at, at our modern culture with all this texting and stuff like that. You do not have different vocal tones that help you to interpret what the other person actually means. And unless you know this other person extremely well, sometimes there is a huge potential for misunderstanding just in written text. Just because 
our experience, our embodied experience, embodied would be another term to describe, our embodied experience of vocabulary and of the use of words diverges extremely and, and is completely different in one person to the other. Sometimes it depends on all the experiences you had in your life, on your social background, on your education, and also on, on every single thing that you experienced regarding this term. So for some people, when I say frog, they have one picture in mind. Some other people have another picture of a frog in mind. Some people might have a traumatic experience when they talk about a frog or they hear the word frog. Now, with, with specific terms, it's quite similar. When we use specific terms in biomechanics, in training, in development and so on, the first and most important thing to understand is what does the other person actually mean with this specific word. That's the most important aspect of them all. If you don't know what meaning the other person gives a specific word, then we really have a huge problem because then they can use whatever grammatical structure they want, they can use whatever actual spoken language they want and it literally won't help them to understand you any better if the, literally the meaning of the words is too far apart, the, 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 the meaning that the interpretation of the words is too far apart between those two people. And one example I always bring in this, um, in this specific situation is I once had a really interesting conversation for about two hours or so with a North American shaman. And it took us about half an hour, three quarters of an hour to figure out that whenever one person was talking about spirit, that's exactly how the other person was interpreting the word soul. And yes, there is a distinct difference in the word spirit and in the word soul. But it's not so much about its, its actual definition that you can look up in a dictionary. It's what you tie into this word, what your experiences with this vocab are. And that's exactly what I want to talk about. And um, in this real life presentations, I'm going to try and make it a little bit more palpable and really try to, to deliver it to people in a way so that they can actually perceive it, feel it on their own body and build just for this specific frame a new meaning back into this word. And that's, that's extremely important, I think. Again, let me know what you think about this idea. Um, let me know if there are any specific terms that you want me to explain. And once again, I'm not trying to create the one and ultimate definition of a word. I'm just simply to try to... I'm just gonna, gonna simply try to create a definition that we can work with. And I'm gonna bring in some of the most common definitions of the word depending on the subject matter. So that's the idea. And yeah, it all... I think it's, it's always the foundation of any work we do. And no matter what type of education or advanced education or workshop anyone is doing, most misunderstandings are there because words are interpreted differently out of different embodied experiences. See you in a second in the next video tomorrow, in the next um, Advent video, and have a wonderful time. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening in. If you want to know more, subscribe to the channel and let me know what you think. I'm really curious what your thoughts on this subject are. Thank you, bye.